Now, these are not unknown things. When one gets down to it, uh, there are people such as myself and others that explain this to Congress. We can fully document this. I mean, I have several books just laid straight out as Clyde Prestowitz and a series of others of kind of came and think of them uh, outside of Japan. These are known things. Then why doesn't it happen? Well, one of the reasons it doesn't happen is because other governments and their corporations understand that we have an open government. And so the Japanese, uh, for example, uh, each year will basically spend more on politics and lobbyists inside the United States than either the Democratic National Committee or the Republican National Committee. Japanese uh, will spend at least $100 million in Washington hiring lobbyists to get people to advocate what's best for them rather than what's best uh, for us. And moreover, in doing this, uh, our laws are so flexible that they're able to hire our former officials to do it. Uh, they can hire Henry Kissinger, they can hire an Alexander Hay, uh, these are secretaries of state. They can hire and do hire our former trade representatives. We've had a succession of our trade representatives who make these agreements, then being hired to represent the other side to get around uh, these trade representatives. Uh, I identify in uh, my new book, Dangerous Business, 400 top government officials by name that served in the Clinton and this administration and the Bush administration who have taken that path. Since 1998, half of the members of Congress who have left office have become lobbyists, most have become lobbyists from foreign interest. They're working against your interests. Let me just tell you straight out. When the NAFTA agreement was negotiated, we wound up with the government of Mexico spent $100 million documented documented uh, to get that agreement through, including two United States uh, trade representatives. So that's a major problem. It happens in deals such as the Panama Canal, when we transfer ownership. It's happened in NAFTA. It's happened in the World Trade Agreement. It is a major problem. The WTO, the World Trade Organization, is a, is a global trade agreement really, it's a membership organization, and it is, in effect, the world court of global trade. Uh, we have put into place agreements under the World Trade Agreement in our effort to stimulate uh, trade, in which we have agreed, as difficult as it may well be to believe, that 151 other countries that are members have a right to challenge any law in the U.S., federal, state, local, as being impeding trade. When we ban the uh, hunting of tuna, the collection of tuna with drag nets, because we were dragging them and killing dolphins, uh, we were challenged by Mexico, and we lost the case. And then we were left with the choice of either changing our law are allowing the WTO to determine what the damages were, and then we either had to pay Mexico, or Mexico had the right to impose a tariff on any export into Mexico to collect that damage. Government of Venezuela, working on behalf of the oil companies, filed a case that said, uh, your restrictions on certain imports of oil that violate or uh, harm your environment uh, impede trade. We lost that case. British gambling interest went to the government of Antigua and asked them to file a case against the United States challenging our laws on internet gambling. We lost that case. 